I often get asked which way to set up your solar is the best. So today I've got the right little video for you. We're gonna give you some examples of panels that we would use, benefits of the type. So we're gonna go over the fixed and portable units to see what could be the best for you. And we're gonna give you some reasons why we would set them up for how we would. So let's get into that now. So here we've got the main type of panel that you'd think of. This is a 200 watt red arc panel. Um, pretty common you think of, it's got a nice little aluminium frame around the side of it, pretty thick. Um, we still love these panels. Um, so these sort of style of rigid panels with a nice backy on them. They got a nice glass top on them. So they still allow you to get a nice efficiency over a long period of time. So you'll see later on, we'll talk about other types of panels that won't last as long in the sun. You see these on houses, there's a reason for that. They'll last the longest they'll do the best job and they're the most efficient. So we still love these. You can get different versions of them. So we sell high voltage panels as well. They're really good if you've got the space for them. Often they're a lot bigger, so you can't fit them on most vehicles, but caravans and the like where you can fit a nice huge panel, that's the benefit and that's the one we prefer to go for. So here we have some flexible panels. Um, while we don't sell these, we thought we'd make a point of them to show you what the benefits to those are and also some of the downsides. So they are obviously, while people are thinking to go these way, they do have some downsides. Obviously their benefits are a lot smaller, they're not gonna add the height to your vehicle. They're a lot easier to mount, especially if you don't have a roof rack, you can often just stick them to surfaces. They're a lot better from that point of view, but unfortunately there are a lot of downsides associated with them as well. Mainly, they'll just not last as long. A few reasons why, you'll notice they're plastic. So they will yellow over time. This customer's had them only for about a year or two and you can already see some yellowing on the sides here, which means it's just not as efficient. Secondly, cause they are mounted and glued to the surface, there isn't any way for them to expand. So if your surface does get hot, which panels in the sun will get hot, they can't expand, which often means they'll expand into themselves and cause damage over a long period of time. And thirdly, when you are driving, they're not gonna get much airflow, so they can't get much cooling. So for a mounted surface, they aren't the best. Sometimes you can get around it by putting it either on top of a roof rack with some airflow underneath it, putting some convoluted tubing underneath it to keep it cold, but still it's not gonna last as long cause it is plastic. And that's the main reason we still prefer your glass framed panels. Here we have a few different type of portable panels. We've got a fixed foldable panel. So your standard sort of aluminum frame panel that are fold together and fold away. So still nice and portable. And then we've got two different styles of blankets. So these, are, this is an Amtron 200 watt blanket, and that's the KT 300 watt blanket that we sell. So you've probably seen that one around quite a bit. Um, this Amtron one's quite a new uh, product that's only been out for a while. So pretty good to get out for some testing. As you can see, it does actually have its own legs so it can support itself. So it's kind of a bit of a hybrid between the two of them. Um, we still prefer when it comes to portable panels to keep them nice and small. So that's why the 300 watt KT has been great for ages. It's nice and small, folds up in a nice small footprint, and it's relatively light. Um, this Amtron one folds up nice and small as well, um, and it's still gonna give you a high output. Now, we don't sell these style of folding panels. This is one that a customer actually had we've borrowed for the video. So these panels are quite big. That's why we don't often sell them. They are good, they'll give you a great high output, but it's just they are quite big, and it's hard to pull them in cars off for time. If you're filling it up with camping gear, you're not gonna have a lot of space to chuck this in. They're okay if you've got a caravan, you've got a bit more space to put stuff in, but if you've got a car, and you've got it already filled up with as much stuff as you want, it's often hard to fit these in. That's why blankets are great. We love them, they're nice and small to pack away, and they still give you quite high output. Now, one thing you can see is they are often quite a bit bigger. So, they are gonna be bigger because the panels aren't as efficient. Obviously, you can see they are the plastic style. So same as you had with the flexible panels we had mounted before, they are not as good for longevity, but the truth is that you're not gonna have them out for that long. A fixed panel you're gonna have on the vehicle permanently and it's always gonna be exposed to sun. These portable panels are only gonna be out when you're using them, so that effect does not really matter as much. They're still gonna give you high output. Obviously, if it's on the ground, you don't really care as much about the roof space. 
that's a 300. We'd often see about a 400, maybe 450 watt fixed panel in that size. And this 200, you could probably get about a 350 maybe in about that size. So they aren't as efficient in space savings, but you are folding them down. That's the best thing about them. They're gonna give you a nice small amount of power. These are great often to supplement a roof pa panel. If you don't have a panel on the roof, they are great as well. There's a lot of times we've done in camper trailers, we've given customers two of the three hard and watt blankets, and that's enough to run an aircon. So next we're gonna pull these away. We'll give you a little size comparison of what they're actually like once they are folded away, so you can really see what the benefits would be between each one. So now I've got these panels folded away and you can really see the difference in size. So we've gone, that's the 200 watt Amtron we had out before with the legs. That's the 300 watt that was lying down on the floor and then you have that folding panel there. So you can see, even though that first panel does fold into half its size, it is still quite big. So that's gonna be quite hard to fit away in most vehicles. The 200 watt Amtron is quite a smaller footprint and it's also very thin. So that's one thing that a lot of people are liking is they're very thin and very easy to pack through side cavities. With the KT, obviously there you see that's got the smallest footprint. It is quite a bit thicker. Obviously it's got a few more panels, it's got to fold in and it's got a pocket for all its doodads in the front there. So, but this is still by far gonna be the most compact out of the options we sell and give you a nice high output at a reasonable price. So last step of your equation, your solar system is gonna be what you need to regulate it. So I've got a few different options here that are quite popular of what we sell. So you mainly see, if you're going like a fixed panel, we often stick with some standalone regulators. So there's a 15 amp regulator from Victron as well as a 30. If you're looking at portable panels, we do also sell the Red Arc range and Amtron have got their own inline MPPT, which is quite good for that blanket if you didn't have a standalone MPPT. Um, the reason we often recommend a standalone MPPT is mainly so if you had a DC-DC charger, you can allow them to both do their jobs independently. What this means is that you'll get more power. So if you only had a 40 amp DC-DC charger, you're only ever gonna get 40 out of it, whether it's from solar or from vehicle or from both. If you have a 40 amp charger, and let's say you had a panel that can put in 10 amps, like a 200 watt panel, through its own regulator, you can get 50 amps in in total between the two of them. So that's gonna give you more power it also means that if for any reason one charger dies, you still have a backup rather than relying on one component. So that's the main reason we recommend to upgrade to a secondary MPPT. It also means if you have a Red Arc charger, you can use the built-in MPPT for a blanket. Obviously, you won't be driving when you've got a blanket plugged in, and then you can leave the roof panel to still work at its full efficiency by itself. So that's the main reason we recommend that. So let's get into some proper examples of vehicles we have here and how we've set them up for our customers. vehicle here is a Prado that we've done for one of our fleet customers. It's got a 180 watt red light panel fitted to it. So this is running in their 50 litre fridge as well as the Starlink when they need to. So this is a vehicle that is often out in the bush for long periods of time where their vehicle or their workers still need to be able to access the internet. So that's why we've done it this way. Um, it's fitted with a Red Arc BCDC 1250D. That allows them to get a nice quick charge in there and a 200 amp hour Amtron battery. So that's gonna keep them to be able to have this set up nice and easy. This is not a kind of vehicle that you're gonna use for camping. It is for work, so they're not worried about cooking or anything like that. Hence why the 180 is gonna be enough. If you are thinking about going down the route of induction or cooking with your battery system, you are gonna need a bit more power to do that. So for an example like that, we'll go on to the next one. So if you wanna be able to cook on your system, you'll need something a bit bigger. So this is my own personal car. I've got a 200 watt KT panel I've got permanently mounted on the roof. And then down here, I've got one of the 200 watt Amtron blankets. So I use this when I am out and about. When I am camping, I use this to fill it back up after cooking. So I am pretty much fully gasless. I use fully induction and, air, and my air fryer and stuff to do my cooking. So this is what allows me to have that extra ability to stay at a campsite for a couple of days and still be able to cook freely and not worry about the fridges going flat. So I've got a 200 watt Amtron battery in there and as well, I've got a Victron controller for the roof panel and my Red Arc BCDC does the blanket. So going back to how we said before about using the different controllers for different types of panels makes life a lot easier and I can get a lot more power out. A lot of the time I'm driving around, I'll see 50, 55 amps coming in from the DC-DC plus the roof panel. So it allows that battery to get fill up nice and quick, especially if I have cooked in the morning and the sun's not come back up. I do want to go for a quick little drive. I can still get enough power and nice and quick to get the batteries fill up so I can still cook for the next night. 
So that's how you would want to work if you're going to be cooking. If you're thinking about staying set up for a long period of time, that's where the next cast comes in. So this is a trip carrier we've got here. Some of you might recognize it. Um, it's one of the first ones we did our trippy interior on. So we've done a video on this vehicle before actually. So we'll link that through here as well. Um, this one has got pretty much a full red arc system in it. So manager 30 and a BCDC as well. So the roof panel on here is a KT 200 watt. That's powered directly into the manager 30. We have the 25 core here. It does work as a DC-DC for the alternator, but we also use this for the blanket. So we've got a nice little red Anderson plug over here, which is in charge of that blanket. So that goes direct into that, and then this regulates it. So this allows the panels to still work at the full efficiency. So even though they are the same brand, they're both a KT panel. This one's got a KT 300 watt blanket he uses. There are some slight voltage differences between the two of them, which can mean when put in one controller, they're not going to be fully efficient. So when we've done this setup, we've thought about that. We've allowed for the blanket to still work at full efficiency through the 25 core, and the roof panel will still work at its full efficiency through the manager. So that's one thing you've got to think of as well. You can put two different panels together. So if you did have a roof panel and a portal panel, you can put them together. You're just not going to get the full efficiency out of each of them because they're going to do a slight bit of fighting against each other. Still work, just not as good as you had two separate ones together. So let's pop out and we'll show you exactly what this setup looks like from the outside. So this customer, as you can see, the 200 watt panel on the roof there, so that's the square one from KT. We still allow the customer to have access of the back of the rack. So a lot of the troopers we've done, we do fit bigger panels too. We have done like our 390 watt panels on top of them before. Um, this customer, however, opted to have the ability to still use the back half of the roof. So that's why we've supplemented it with the blanket. So obviously you can see on the floor here, we've got the 300 watt set up. So it gets 500 watts in total. So that is more than enough for him to sit around at a spot for multiple days, almost continuously, to be able to still cook, run the big fridge in the back, and have a nice setup continuously. So if you're looking for something like that, that's sort of where you want to look at. Obviously caravans where you're running aircon, that's where you're going to need much bigger setups. Often for those thinking about aircon, it's at least 800 we sort of want in a panel. Um, so that's usually a combination of about 600 on the roof with at least a 200 watt blanket as well. It does depend on what the vehicle is. If it's a van, you can usually get bigger vans that have much bigger roof space. Some hybrids you can't. Obviously, you've all seen before, as I said earlier in the video, we've done some vans we've given to customers two of the 300s. If you're not cooking on the system, it can usually be enough to get away with 600 watts for aircon, but it really does really depend on how big your battery bank is as well. So it really does depend on each setup. There is no rule for everything being exact, but these are some ideas to give you some examples. And we have got another vehicle here, which I'll show you in a sec, which is just blankets. So we'll get into that one now, actually. So this is Justin's D-Max, uh, you would have seen it in a few different videos. Uh, you would have seen recently he's fitted the tray and canopy to this. Uh, we've got a new product in here. This is a behind the seat setup um, for the D-Max. So it's got a 100 amp hour battery, uh, Red Arc Alpha charger in there, um, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, he uses the 300 watt KT blanket that we've just got set up out the door out there. So that's what he uses for most of the stuff to charge. Obviously it's not a huge battery system he's got in here. It's quite quaint. Um, so it's easy enough to run a fridge and maybe cook with maybe a travel buddy or something like that, but you wouldn't be going induction or anything like that off of this setup. So he doesn't need a roof mounted panel. Um, there will later be on other setups this vehicle will have that'll be pretty insane, so I wait to see that. But for now, it's a pretty nice little easy setup. So you don't need a roof panel mounted for this. He doesn't have a, a fridge permanently in here. So that's one thing we often say to most people is if you are having a fridge permanently mounted and you don't do much driving of the vehicle, it is a good idea to have a panel fixed on it because then you can allow that fridge to run continuously without needing to worry about driving. Especially if you only drive five, 10 minutes every day to work, that fridge will have a really hard time because the batteries are not filled up enough. So that's one reason we'd recommend a fixed panel. But in this kind of situation, Justin drives about 30 minutes to work every day. So that's an hour there and back. That charger gets it full enough each day. So even if you did have a fridge in here, it would still be more than enough. So it does depend on your situation, but this is a good setup for what he's got. Blankets enough so that he can stay at a campsite and run his fridge, run his travel buddy to cook enough um, while he's away. But yeah, so that's a nice little setup for him for now. So there are some of the examples of vehicles that we have here, some options that we have, as well as the benefits of each type of panel. So we went over the fixed panels, the portable panels, and all the different variants in between them. 
I hope this has helped you with some of your questions that you might have. If there's anything else, leave your comments down below and we'll get back to you. Otherwise, the link's in the description to see our whole range of panels. Anyways, we'll see you in the next one.